And how do you feel about the social media aspect of things? Obviously, you've opened the show up to social media, the TV show, you see it as well, inviting people uh, to, to tweet you mm-hmm. at Stephen Nolan, Twitter verified. Yes. <laughs> how are you finding that? Is it a bit a bit alien? It's sort of the last couple well, of years all of a sudden. I refused to do Twitter until a couple of years ago and Vinny um, forced me <laughs> and just set it up for me and uh, and then I caught on to it. Um, I think it's very, very important. I think it's very important because... What a presenter should bring to a show is a personal brand and a personal connection with listeners. I think sometimes broadcasting organisations get this wrong and they kind of think to themselves, well, you know, don't let's not have the presenter being too impactful. Let's have the station as the entity being impactful. Well, again, I just think that's utterly nonsensical. The point of pre- of employing a presenter and paying a presenter good money and good wages is that they will have a significant impact on a program. And I think to answer your question about social media, you know, I like the notion of saying to someone, a citizen, a listener, who at the end of the day is keeping me in a job, they've got access to me whether I'm sitting in front of a microphone or not. Mm. You know, they can send. They can essentially. I'm not in a bed some nights. I don't sleep a lot of nights throughout the whole night you know I, I'm not is there any best. reason that you don't is it my mind is active is it hard to switch off when you get home from work um, sometimes I've seen myself up in the middle of the night dictating letters that need to be sent to a chief executive the next day see myself up in the middle of the night trying to come up with a programme idea I'm a bit of an anorak mm-hmm and so I find it hard to switch off sometimes. Um, and so people, you know, you look at your phone and there's, what a, what a great thing that is. You know, the, the communication and the intimacy that you can have through a microphone on a radio program that I can have for 90 minutes every day. I can try to continue that personal connection by someone thinking, well, if they send a tweet to me, it, it's it's landing on my iPhone. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sitting in the house and, you know, it's, it's not going through 100 filters. I'm seeing it, you know, I no. like that. Obviously, a very public eye job, being in the media in general, being on BBC, puts you even more so in the limelight. When you read something that's written down about you, whether it's in a newspaper, yeah, whether it's a tweet, something hurtful, th- does it hurt you? Or you know, because they say broadcasters need to be thick-skinned. Do things get through when you read it? Of course they do. You wouldn't be a human being um, if it didn't. Mm-hmm. And anybody that says it doesn't, uh, they're spoofing. Yeah. Um, Hurt, hurt is too strong a word. Probably irritating mm. is better. If you've got something being said about you that isn't true, um, it's really, really irritating. Um, but I think you do. You know, it's more irritating. It was more irritating ten years ago than it is now because as you go on and you get more experienced and you understand that that for whatever reason people will want to knock you down, then you do just kind of get used to it. Uh, and you know do you think sometimes people don't notice because and i i don't i'm not accusing people of being emotionally ignorant but you follow the hashtag for example if we're using twitter as an example for when x factor's on people will go on and spew a lot of bile about that contestant is ugly they can't sing x y and z and this is a completely they may as well be an inanimate object they've never met the person they don't know them they've been on the screen for 20 seconds bang yeah automatic hatred do people feel that when there's a show on it's open to criticism right away and it's not doing any harm? Well, the show is open to criticism mm-hmm. and I am open to criticism and it's completely right. Um, you know, what happens in this programme is if there's anybody criticising me, they're put to the very top of the phone queue, like every time. Mm-hmm. Um, and but you enjoy an argument as well, don't you? I do, and, and I've also asked for that. You know, I, you know that that's really, really important. Uh, in the DNA of what I do, you know, if I'm questioning others, they need to be able to to have a go at me, point things out, ridicule me, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, and so that's not what we're talking about here. Uh, what irrit- that does not irritate me. What does irritate me is that when people either tell lies about me, or when people go out to deliberately damage me, mm-hmm. that irritates me. And you do get that. You know, some people would criticise me and in the same sentence talk about the downside of my success. I don't even really consider myself to be that successful. 
Yeah. That, the, that, the, that's the your downside, ambition, though, isn't it? The downside of, you know, uh, how arrogant he is. Actually, what's the real truth? I think I'm a pretty ordinary bloke who works incredibly hard and is driven and does not have any more knowledge than most people and is not as good looking as most people and is not as fit as most people and therefore what I need to do to compensate for that is work really hard so it irritates me that so I'm you're telling me if you were if you were a model with a beach body mm-hmm. you'd probably not be bothering trying as hard on the shoe I don't see that at all no I'm saying to you I'm saying to you that when people say as, as some of them mm-hmm. yeah, not when people just say a comment. When someone goes out of their way to damage me. Yeah. Because, and it happens, and it has happened. And the reason to be really, really uh, nasty about it is because they think to themselves, there's a guy with hundreds of thousands of quid in the bank. There's a guy who's so successful that he's arrogant and thinks he is somebody. That irritates me because I don't think I am somebody. Um, The reality is completely different from what they're doing and saying. And actually what I'm trying to do is hold down a job in exactly the same way that an electrician that puts an ad in the yellow pages and is trying to get as much work as he can. Mm-hmm. and as much money as he can is trying to hold down a job and the key point is do I see myself better than that electrician answer absolutely not is that when the show stops working if that if that mindset were to change is that when well that's when I start working as a human being yeah. forget about the show and forget about the media you know if you and I, I, I see this in, in my business and I'm sure it happens in all different mm-hmm. walks of life once you start becoming a human being that actually thinks that you're better than other people ah <sighs> It's not the type of person I want to be. And so that's why it irritates me when people suggest that is what I am, because I'm not. Mm -hmm. And that irritates me. That irritates me big time. What do they want me to do? Do they want me to come on this program? So think about what I do. I say it's the biggest show in the country. Why do I do that? Because I'm trying to get people to listen. I'm trying to say it's really important. I have got it to the stage where it is the biggest show in the country. I'm trying to say to the BBC, this is a successful show, back it. I'm trying to say to the listeners, this is a successful show, back it. If you need help, it's a big show. Use it. Now, what would these enemies of mine prefer I did? Would they prefer I came on in the mornings and said, listen, now, it's an ordinary show. We're not too sure if we've got anything good today. I don't really sound that confident. So, look, please, you know, decide what you want to do and we'll all sound feeble. Like, mm. It's ridiculous. Yeah. The alternative to what I do is ridiculous, in my view. Yeah. No, and I, I can understand that. I've described it before. Um, as I actually think it's a sophisticated show, and I know that will make you happy. But I think it is sophisticated in the sense that you you need to be completely switched on and engaged with what's happening. Because if you're not that you could miss it could be something as simple as a question and it, it's not simple I suppose but you know the power of a question and how it can completely change the tone of an interview because it can get through somewhere yep big time big time look this show we've been on air for nearly 10 years now um, we have never been brought to court there has never been a successful lawsuit can I say touch us. wood I do not want to be responsible yes, for that jinx we, we you know but to be doing to be doing the type of controversial stuff we have been mm-hmm. doing for yeah. 10 years at the level of politics we've been doing, um, you know, I am proud of that now. You know, touch mm-hmm. wood. And things can go wrong and things do go wrong, but we, we, we try, you know, we also we also stop stories going out on air that would be great for ratings, you know, a lot of the time because we're not 100% sure of the facts or... We don't think it is fair on a particular um, individual, mm-hmm. um, and we do that too. So, and the public, I don't think, are necessarily aware of that because that's a that's a process that goes on, yep. sort of behind the the curtain, if you want to call it that. And so, there's a lot more thought to radio than going on pushing a wee button up and uh, saying hello, how are you? One of the worst things that I hear, you talk about the the sophistication of this show. One of the most irritating things where I actually like my 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 fist clenches is that when I hear a producer, not necessarily in the BBC, just when I meet producers, Mm -hmm. be it in commercial radio, BBC, anywhere, and they say, oh, we don't like those type of people on our show, you know, in terms of callers. And I say, I'm sorry. Well, they don't really sound that educated, do they? Well, I think to myself, so um, 
So if you if you haven't had an education, what, you don't have any right to talk in this society? If you don't sound as articulate as someone else, mm-hmm. you don't have a right to be part of this society? You probably have have um, more need to have your voice heard because if you don't have an education and you're not particularly articulate, you might not be employed. You might be at the top of the so might not be at the top of the social spectrum. So therefore, if you're talking about education policy or housing or benefits, your personal experience, your life experience, and how you want that policy to change is actually vital. Mm-hmm. And then you get these these bloody producers, or whatever that kind of say, oh no no no. So you know, I I do I think I I think I do push against the grain, in that I don't want anybody coming on that is being gratuitously offensive. But I just question the intelligence of people that suggest other human beings aren't intelligent enough to be heard. Mm-hmm. Like, what does that mean? It's ridiculous. No, there's an, so there's an arrogance which I think you don't welcome on the air, and I think a lot of people are glad that you wouldn't welcome it on your show. And so that's a big thing, but it's an interesting thing, and there is a sophistication to that in getting that type of mm. person on to the BBC or any other yeah. radio program. Now, in closing. I think it would be amiss of me not to ask this. There would be people listening today. Is this your killer question, Michael? Listen, no, uh, we're, we're going soft punches today because you've been so amicable. Uh, I see. But, <laughs> but it's just people listening will think, I want radio. I want to work in radio. I need to work in radio. Stephen, how do they get their shot? Now, that's a tough question, I suppose. But they, they, they need advice. I'm asked this quite a lot. Um, uh, they set themselves apart from the rest because don't underestimate that the majority of people um, will say they want to do it, will say that they're really desperate to do it, but they're actually not desperate. And they don't go the extra, 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 extra mile. They might go the extra mile, but they don't go five extra miles. Mm. And so if someone really wants to be a radio producer or a radio presenter, are they standing outside the building five days a week until they get the job? Um, are they refusing to take no for an answer? I was turned down for a traffic and travel job in here. They told me I didn't have a voice for it. <laughs> um, they refused to answer my letters in here. I just wrote more. If someone really, really wants to be part of this industry, they will make it. Not enough people set us, set themselves apart from the rest. The other advice I'd, I'd give anybody that wants to be part of radio is go and buy. It's not that expensive now. You can do it in some of your phones if you have iPhones or whatever. Mm-hmm. Go and record stuff and edit it make packages and the difference of being able to say to a potential employer anywhere this is what i have done rather than this is what i could do Mm -hmm. go and record packages yeah um and put it together and experiment the air miles you were talking about of sorts big time and get yourself into a community radio station like i do believe that and a lot of the people who really want to make it in life do Mm -hmm. that's the other thing like it's not all pessimism no I you don't steal my job. <laughs> I will shake on it now, Stephen. Okay. Thank you very Thank much you, for Michael. your time. Good luck.